Hi, in this tutorial I'll explain render passes or AOVs and their crucial role in enhancing render quality. In the view layer section there's a passes section, open it to reveal the layers. You'll see many options here, each providing a specific render layer. First enter render mode by pressing the Z key and selecting rendered. Alright, I've set up lighting in my scene and I'm using cycles for rendering. For more on lighting techniques, you can watch this tutorial. Let's choose the appropriate layers. In Diffuse, select both direct and indirect. I also require both direct and indirect for the glossy pass. Let's select the transmission. If it appears satisfactory, I'll include it in the final render. Lastly, select the emission and ambient occlusion. The last option is essential. I don't require anything else. I can also add custom AOVs in this section by creating a shader for the new AOV. Ok, let's return to solid mode and get ready for the final render. Before we proceed, let's examine the compositing section. As you can see, there are a couple of render layers here, each representing a specific image and color space. Additionally, I have some effect nodes here. I've added a glare, color balance, lens distortion, and finally connected it to the render result and viewer node. If you are interested in cinematic composition, you can watch the tutorial here. In another tutorial on EV composition, you can also find it here. Additionally, I can export each texture render layer to a specific path. Press Shift and A and search for the file output node. Then connect each layer you want. For instance, I want to export DevDeer here. Select the node and in its settings designate a path for it. And for the final step, let's specify a subpath or prefix for the file. Select whatever you prefer and you can conclude it with an underscore. Ok, I need to export other layers without creating a new file output node. Duplicate the existing node by pressing Shift and D. Then update the subpath as well. And do this for all layers, it may take some time. Additionally, you can manually export each layer in the final render. Alright, everything is set. The only remaining task is to export the final image using the file output node. In the render settings, I've chosen cycles and GPU for rendering and in the sampling section, I should set it to 1000. I also have a tutorial on optimizing render time. You can watch it. Additionally, the, the noiser is active for this render. Lastly, let's verify the output resolution. Alright, render the image. This process might take some time. My render is ready. I can go to a compositing section and make some changes. For example, if I want, I can adjust the color balance. Then save it using the rendering window. These are my render layers. You may want to include more layers, but for mine, these layers are enough. For example, this is AO layer. Or this is the glossiness layer that I want to combine with the final render. Open the final render in Photoshop or any other software such as Krita or GIMP. Then I need to drag in the layers. I'll start with ambient occlusion. First, I want to enhance the contrast of this layer. In the image and then adjustment, select brightness and contrast and increase the contrast. Next, change the layer mode to multiply to blend it with the layer below. You can observe the differences. There are outlines here on the shining areas that occurred due to applying AO. I could erase them using the erase tool, but I prefer to mask them out. Create a mask and with the mask selected, switch to the brush tool using the B key. Switch the color to black with the X key and brush over the areas you want to mask. I also don't want AO to affect the margins, let's mask them out as well. 
Now you can observe the differences, including the ambient shadows in these areas. Let's duplicate the AO layer to intensify the ambient shadows and then Ctrl G to group them. I can enhance the power of AO using other methods, but duplicating is faster. I'll reduce the opacity of this group slightly. Ok, let's incorporate additional layers. The next is diffusing direct. It's too noisy. I can solve it by applying some blur. Navigate to filter and then blur, then choose Gaussian blur. 2 is appropriate, press OK and then set the layer to color dodge, for example. You can choose screen, but it tends to look too dusty. Depending on your image's atmosphere, you might notice some extra shine. Alright, let's add the next layer, glass there. I also need to apply a blur to this layer. Then set the blending mode to screen. It's too shiny, let's lower the opacity. It looks good. I can also try using color dodge. Alright, let's duplicate the layer and set it to screen. The opacity of the second glass layer is very low. Group them by pressing Ctrl and G. Now add the final layer, Gloss Indirect. Apply blur to it, just like you did with the other layers. Change the blending mode to color dodge and then adjust the opacity. I think 40 is better, after that I'll need to duplicate the layer. And change its blending mode to screen. Lastly, group it as we did before. There are one or two images remaining, such as emission, but I don't need them. Or transfer, which is completely black and unusable. Finally, let's compare the final render with and without AOVs. There are a lot of differences. You can try exporting other AOVs to see their results, for example the mist layer. This represents the fog volume if there is fog in the scene. All of these factors depend on your scene. Thanks for watching, if you enjoyed this video please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions and ideas feel free to share them in the comments.